He started his own brand in 2011. He received the CFDA Swarovski Award for menswear in 2014. And that same year, you were a nominee for the LVMH Prize. And very recently, you were in the news because you were named Executive Creative Director at Under Armour Sportswear. Yeah. That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about this news. What's going on? I mean, what's Under Armour? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really big company um, that makes uh, athletic apparel. Um, it's number two in America. Um, and we don't know it. It's I number two in people, America. Some people might know it. There's, um, there's a couple of European athletes that wear it. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's more known in America just because it's rooted uh, in American football and basketball. So it's, you know, it's, it's obviously more uh, European sports. Um, but so they have the athletic apparel, apparel. They're number two in America. They're bigger than Adidas. And now it's, I think the business is like four billion. They now want to... Four billion yeah. dollars uh -huh. turnover? Yeah. yeah, just yeah, for mainly America. So it's, a wanna, it's, it's, a it's a big thing. It's a big company. Yeah, yeah. It's a big company, yeah. So yeah. now they want to expand into uh, a lifestyle category, category. and uh, so that's what I'm going to um, heading head up for them. So it's a new collection. Yeah. So it's far, they haven't done really a lifestyle brand. No. no. Yeah. And it's it's uh, it's more premium, so it's going to sit alongside uh, other, um, I mean, athletic brands that are doing things in in a sim like a Y3, etc. It's not the same thing, but I think you can consider it in the same kind of like. Um, um, group mm -hmm. and um, uh, so it's totally new it's men's women's accessories shoes new stores and you'll thing. do all that which means you need a team you need to build a team around you yeah, yeah. It's, stores it's you also said stores that's yeah, everything it's wow. the it's the whole creative language that goes along with the new brand okay uh, that was something fabulous for you when uh -huh. they called yeah. you probably yeah, it's, it's huge yeah yeah that's yeah. also I mean it's also something that grew because I knew the man that was hired to uh, set this up from Adidas, and then he contacted me, and I was like, yeah, I'd love to do it, because it's, it's a huge company that has um, amazing resources. They have, uh, they have money to do things, um, and I can keep doing my brand. It's an American, American brand, yeah, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so you can keep doing your own brand. Yeah, the way I want it. Yeah. And I have a lot of autonomy with, uh, within Under Armour as well, so there's a lot of like, They've hired me to do this, so they, they kind of want to give me freedom to decide where, where I take it mm -hmm. uh, with responsibility of, you know, yeah. making it As work. As to course. workload, this means you're going to get much more work. Yeah, but there's a team, all. There's a yeah. team that, I can, that I can build mm -hmm. to, to make this happen within Under Armour. And then, of course, um, one thing feeds into the other. You know, my brand will feed into that brand, etc. You know, so it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how will this be the attitude towards your own brand, will this change for you? Will this no. no, I think even more so because, I, because the, the thing that I'm going to do for Under Armour Sportswear is there's a lot of similarities. It's a different price point. It's a different positioning. It's, okay. it's, everything's different. It has a, it has a far bigger reach. Uh, we're not going to, you know, this is going to be a big business. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, aesthetic similarities mm -hmm. um, in everything across across all categories um, but it doesn't have the same uh, I don't know the same the same soul as how I approach my brand yeah. where I take you know influences from what I've built in my in my life you know being in being in Belgium being in New York etc cetera, etc cetera. Under Armour is more you know it's a, it's, a, it's a concept it's created um, but aesthetically there's a lot of similarities okay your own brand, for people who may not know, is high-end luxury. Am I high-end luxury sportswear? Yeah. Am yeah, I correct? Yeah. 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 It sits in, um, I mean, it sells in, in, in the same category as all the other luxury brands, mm -hmm. and whether it's sportswear or, or uh, tailoring or, or whatever it is. Um, so there's, there's um, especially in menswear, there's, like, there's not that much, much growth possibility as in uh, Under Armour sportswear. Yeah. But it gives me, you know, it gives me a lot more freedom where I can, like, of course, there's certain, like, limitations when I work with, with the Under Armour brand, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to pick a, a $100 cashmere or something, it's going to, it's, that's the things that you have to, like, balance out. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's also, I think that also makes it, um, 
interesting because you know that the aesthetic and the way that brand feels still has to <clears throat> for my, because I'm doing it, so it's also my, my hand, it has to achieve like the same premium aesthetic, whether that's like a lower price point or it doesn't matter, you know, it has to have that same level of like yeah. finish it, uh, and, and that's also why they, yeah. they've asked me to do this. Tell us about how you started your brand. I remember talking to you in Manhattan a few years ago in, in, in your office, which was also your apartment, and there was this trail with clothes, yeah. and you were very excited, and stores were very excited from the beginning, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, in New York, it's, it's, um, it's easier to meet people that know people that can introduce you to other people. So I got it's to know... It's a smaller world? It's a smaller world, but it's also, I think it's open to new... I mean, uh, maybe at that point, it, it was open to, to seeing new, something new. Uh, and what I did was something new. It was a little, you know, it had some sports influences, but it was tailored and it was fashion and it could hang next to Comme des Garçons. And, but at the same time, it was different. And so Barney's was interested in seeing it and they saw it and they bought it. Um, and I quit my job and then... You were at Ralph Lauren yeah, at the yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and um, yeah, then stores came and I did some consultancy here, consultancy there. And, and then, um, yeah, it just, it opens doors when you're in New York. It's not just like that, you know, you have to, I mean, you still have to work, you, you know, you weigh through all these things and you still have to make sure that your production's on time and you, that your quality's right, um, that you do the right things, uh, PR and sales and, and there's a lot of things that when you start your brand, you have to learn, which yeah. I had to learn, especially in, a, in mm -hmm. a market that I didn't know. There's a different way of talking to people. There's a different way of handling people. It's maybe a little bit more, um, uh, aggressive, you know, because you can... Direct, like more direct. direct. Yeah, yeah, I think direct. Mm -hmm. That's probably, a, you know, like, hey, this is my thing, check it out. And then, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's... You, you also had fans from the beginning. I remember Stephen Gann, mm -hmm. yeah. who picked up, I think it was a jacket, yeah. a beige jacket, and yeah. wore it, and I mean, he... The talk started. Yeah, yeah. About I mean, it's, your I brand. think, yeah, I mean, and those kind of things, like the, because we had the collection in, the, in Barney's, and then Philip mm -hmm. Lim bought the first jacket that was in the store, and then Stephen Gaon was wearing it, and Karl Lagerfeld said, Oh, it's nice, can I have one? And Karl Lagerfeld, yeah. Also, so then, yeah. you know, th there's like, you know, people are interested, and um, they see that the, that the product is different, and um, there's something interesting happening with it. Yeah. Um, and that's good. And yeah. that's the start, you know, so you get hyped a little bit and then you have to maintain that. Yeah. What was difficult at that point, starting out? What was difficult? Uh, I think production. Yeah. yeah. Where did you produce? Uh, we did it in New York. I mean, yeah. I did it in New York. Yeah. yeah. So I did everything. Uh, so there's locally. still production going on in New York. Yeah. A lot of people don't know it's, that. It's less and less, but I, I think it, it just when you start out your business, it's convenient because you can take a train to the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, train, you know, I mean, it's like a tram. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it's. Um, yeah, and then uh, you can you can make your stuff there, ship it out, and that's it. You don't do that anymore now. No, no. So no. now it's where? Uh, Europe. In Europe. Yeah, yeah. Which is a plus for your product. Uh, it's just it's a it's a necessity because all the the materials, the raw materials, are sourced from from Italy or you know mm -hmm. close by, uh, and then we we produce here in Europe and then we ship it out from. Yeah. Uh, uh, from within Europe, and then it goes worldwide, and then you have you, know, you run into like all this, yeah. uh, like logistic stuff <laughs> that is like <laughs> very boring. Okay, now we're but five uh, years later. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like eight collections, something like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. What what's yeah. the what's difficult now? Um, <clears throat> well, the 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 difficulty is uh, to stay relevant, mm -hmm. I think. But that that's maybe not the difficult part for me, like because people can always be interested in what you do. They can always look at it. But it just has to make sense in in the in the in the way the industry is uh, is is working today. Everybody like wants to produce and wants to sell, and that's all good. And Burberry can promote that, and they can bring stuff to the store because there's a big beast, and you know they, that's all easy. That's the same thing that we're presenting the. The Under Armour uh, collection uh, in September, and the day it's presented, you have a little iPad, and you can order. And the next day, you have it in your door. So that's, that's the new way to do it. So that's new, yeah. that, but that's then you have an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So for me as a brand, I have to like find ways to work with that new way of 
uh, working with, with an industry that's changing, and that's not so easy because yeah. I don't have those resources. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's other ways, I mean. You still you know. do a show, a fashion show in New York? Uh, yeah, we show. Uh, yeah. You do it du during menswear, not during women's wear anymore? Because I used to see it when I came in yeah, September. Yeah. But because it's a, a, it's, a, it's a predominantly men's show. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of girls always in it. There's an extension of the collection that is the women's wear. Um, because people ask you for that? Because you want it? Because I want it and because people were eager to see what that women's collection could look like. I never really intended to make like a full-blown women's collection. That would be a little bit too... Uh, too much to do at this point, um, but it's interesting to just overlap certain things and to take certain things out of the menswear collection, put them in the women's wear collection, to just extend that with some feminine pieces. Um, it just like extends the vision of what the, what what Tim Coppins as a brand could be. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, we show in New York because the brand is even though I'm Belgian, like a uh, big part of the DNA is is New York. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, and how that's do you I consider the fashion show? How, how important and relevant is it today as a tool? Mm. Do you need it? Maybe, maybe not, <clears throat> but you need, I mean, if you, the, you need sales, so you need to, you need to sell your product. Um, but sometimes buyers have already bought before yeah, the show, right, so why do you need a show? Because for me, I mean, if we, we did it before, I mean, we do it like that all, mm -hmm. every time in Paris because Paris is before New York. So you see a rack of clothes and that's interesting, but you have to see it together. You know, you have to see it um, as a full look or as a story or as a, as a concept. Uh, if, if, for my brand at least, I mean, if I would sell t-shirts, it would be a different thing, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concept, it's a story that I want to show in its totality. So. There's other ways to do that, but those things are not, I mean, they're, they're, they're also, they can also, like a video or whatever, but they also have to be created. So yeah, totally. the easiest thing, right?